Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Club podcast. Today, let's talk about becoming known for something. So I think that for many of us, we have this inner desire for recognition because I've noticed a common thread among myself, our clients, and also for some of you who are in our community, I've noticed that number one, we care deeply about something. Like there's something that we care so much about, right? And we want to do quality work and help people in relation to this area or this topic or thing that we care about. But also number two is I've noticed that for many of us, we also want to be recognized. Yes, we want to do good work, but we also have this inner desire to be recognized for the good work that we do. Yes, we want to help a lot of people, but we also want to be known as the person who genuinely cares about helping people. Yes, we have an innate work ethic and we are so dedicated to what we do, but we also want to be known as someone who is deeply committed to their crap and someone who works hard towards making an impact in this world. So this episode is dedicated to all of us who have big dreams, not only in terms of the income and impact that we want to make, but we also have these big dreams when it comes to building a body of work, becoming known for our unique thought leadership, and also amplifying the messages or causes that matter to us. So that's why in this episode, first, we will take a look at what it means to become known for something. And then we're going to look at the three mistakes that coaches and content creators and entrepreneurs make, which end up not helping them become known for anything, right? And it really just kind of limits the the impact that they actually make overall. And finally, we will discuss some practical tips and insights for you to consider implementing in your own brand and business. So it's going to be a really, really jam-packed and fun episode. So with that, let's dive right on in. Okay, so first of all, what does it mean to be known for something? Well, there are many types of things that you can be known for, and some examples on the top of my mind include you can be known for your occupation or job title. So for example, Oprah is known as a talk show host, and the hosts of the Asian Black Girl podcast are known for, well, their podcasts, right? You can also be known for specific concepts or ideas, i.e. your body of work. So for example, Dr. Carol Dweck is really well known for her concepts and work around fixed mindset and growth mindset, whereas Dr. Angela Duckworth is really known for her work around grit, right? And here's an example of someone who doesn't have a PhD, okay? So one of my favorite YouTube channels is called Form of Therapy, and basically, their channel does a lot of very thoughtful commentary and analysis on new K-pop music releases, right? You can also be known for something that you created. For example, Rachel Lim is the co-founder of a really popular fashion brand in Singapore called Love Bonito, and it's actually starting to pop up all around the world. And Jeff Bezos is known for founding Amazon, right? You can also be known for your story and the values embedded in your story. So for example, Even though Mark Zuckerberg is primarily known for being the founder of Facebook, his story of being a college dropout is actually pretty well known also, right? And also John Nash, he is very well known for his story. So John Nash is actually uh, known for his really prolific and successful career as a mathematician, but then he got diagnosed with schizophrenia right, which basically derailed his entire life since. But now there is a really famous movie and also a book called A Beautiful Mind, which is basically a biography of the life of John Nash. So you basically can't know about John Nash's work without knowing about his story either. And finally, you can also be known for a specific achievement. So for example, basketball players like LeBron James, Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant, and so on, they're all known for specific achievements and basketball history and so on and so forth, right? There's definitely a lot more ways of becoming known for something other than the examples I just shared. So as you can see, there's really no clear-cut definition of what it means to be known for something. And just like how there's really no clear-cut pathway to becoming known for something, there are many, many, many ways to make this happen. But If I had to identify like a common denominator between all the examples that we just touched on, it would be that 
The reason why these individuals are known for something is because number one, first, they have evidence that they're good at what they do. So for some, maybe they've been seen as the best of the best, but for others, they may not necessarily be known as the best, right? But they're still really good at their craft. And also it took years to build up their name and their reputation for themselves. So it wasn't a quick success, right? There were likely years of hard work and often failure and really tough times in order for them to become good at what they do today and become known for what they do, right? And also number two, in this day and age, if you search any of these people's names online, there is going to be some sort of body of work, even if it's not necessarily created by the person themselves. So whether it's a YouTube channel that you created yourself or it's someone else narrating your work or your story, right? Or even like, for example, like NBA fans analyzing the performance of their favorite players, right? It's more important than ever that you have some sort of online presence that really captures the scope of who you are and what you do, especially because if someone who isn't familiar with you, they want to learn more about what you do, then they'll have information available to them on the internet, right? So the way I interpret this is that in order for each of these examples that we talked about, in order for them to become known for what they do and who they are, they first have to hone in on what they do and have some sort of proof of results or street cred. And number two, they have some sort of body of work in place to document and highlight what they're doing and how they're impacting the world. And because of these two variables, they're now able to achieve the recognition, make the level of income that they're making, and ultimately, they're positively impacting the world by doing what they really, really, really like to do and what they're really proud of. But how does all of this apply to those of us who are building our own brands and businesses on the internet? Well, let's unpack exactly that. Okay, so I want to first start by using myself as a mini case study to illustrate a few points. So at the moment, I would say that I am known for several things. So first, I'm known for my story of quitting law school when I realized that I was chasing prestige and the ego desire of impressing others and that law was not the career where I could do work that I was really proud of or be of service to the world, right, in my own way. Right. And I'm also known for my story of quitting my PhD because the pandemic resulted in me being separated from my loved ones for nearly two years. And I realized that in this next season of my life, being with my loved ones mattered more than finishing a PhD. So I decided to quit the PhD. So from these two stories, another nugget that a lot of my audience members have also extracted and now associate with these two stories is courage. Right. I've seen several audience members actually tell me how courageous my story was. So perhaps that's another thing that I'm known for. Okay. And number two, another thing that I'm known for is that I'm a coach who works with a lot of side hustlers. And I specifically focus on teaching the skills of thought leadership and soft launching. Right. And even on my application forms, when clients apply to work with me or on sales calls with me, a lot of clients have said that they specifically want to learn the skill of thought leadership from me, or they want to learn how to soft launch and sign clients on zero to two hours a week. Right. And I'm also known for like a few miscellaneous fun things like sharing a lot of cats and my content and marketing or how I was in a long distance relationship for almost five years and using a lot of sparkle emojis in my Instagram stories. Right. But for the purpose of this conversation, let's just focus on the first two examples. So with the first two examples that we just talked about of what I'm known for, I had to work through my own resistance to sharing them, to embodying them, or even becoming known for them, right? So first, when it came to my story, there was a time when I was really, really, really worried about what people will think, right? Will they think I'm a quitter who can't commit to anything? Will they judge me for not being legit enough since I quit grad school two times? Do they think that it's only because of my privilege that I'm making such rash decisions, right? I had a lot of fear and deeply rooted anxiety about sharing these parts of my story. So as you may have guessed, like there were moments when I wanted to just like gloss over my story or like water it down or like polish it up. So it sounds more rational or like super smart. Like it was super smart of me to quit grad school. 
right? And that is exactly the first mistake that a lot of people fall into, which leads them to not becoming known for anything, including their story, right? So the first mistake is actually editing your story, your words, your message in order to be more palatable, more polished, more smart sounding, etc. right? But what happens is that when you edit and polish your story, for example, is that although your story might read well and sound crisp and clean and clear, the thing is that people can't really feel you. It's just nice sounding, but that's it. It doesn't really impact people deeply. It doesn't make them think. And it doesn't make anyone pay more attention to you and who you are and how you can help them, right? When you're editing and editing and polishing and polishing out of the fear of being judged, not wanting to ruffle feathers, and maybe even the flavor of people pleasing, I would argue that you end up becoming just another entrepreneur in a very saturated marketplace, a brand that looks and feels like everyone else and no one sees you as a thought leader and your content doesn't stop the scroll. So for myself, I first had to learn to really be proud of my story, my message and what I do and then learn to create safety for me to share what I really am deeply proud of online. So that's the first thing. But now let's talk about the skills that I'm known for, right? Such as thought leadership and self-launching. Well, when I was in the earlier stages of my, my journey, I definitely was not known for thought leadership or self-launching. Instead, I fell into the, the loop of looking around at what my colleagues and my niche were doing and how they were selling and how they were positioning the program. And I felt like, well, if it's, if it's like working for them, then I should do the same thing, right? So for a while, my content and marketing, it was very, very, it was very, very generic, right? It sounded just like any other business coaching program sold by someone who just jumped into the business coaching space because they signed a few clients in another niche and now they wanted to help people sign clients too, right? Like that's how my content and marketing and brand was coming across in my own opinion, right? So that's the second mistake that stops a lot of people from becoming known for something, which is that when we spend so much time looking at what our colleagues are doing and modeling after them in our content, in our marketing, on our website, and so on, that does not communicate to our audience how we are positioned to help them, how confident we are that we can help them, or why they should work with us today, right? It doesn't communicate any of that when we're crafting our every step after what other people are doing. And instead, we just become a very watered down version of our colleagues. That's what it communicates to people. And for me, the reason I was able to start noticing that I was making these two mistakes was that there was a time period in my business where I was booking sales calls, but it was really interesting because on the sales calls, the clients would say like, oh, thanks for the call. It was great, but I'm actually meeting with a few more business coaches. So I'll get back to you as soon as I make a decision. And that's when I realized, oh, they were interviewing me, right? They see me and the others as just like options that they wanted to interview and see like who they like best and maybe who had the best value for money program. And that's when I realized, Cheryl, you're not known for anything. You're not known for anything and your audience just doesn't know why they should work with you over someone else who's doing very similar things as you. And from then on, I started to make shifts in my content and in my marketing and overall brand so that number one, I could differentiate me and my work in a saturated niche. And number two, I'm also now known for my story and the particular skills that I teach inside my program. And number three, I'm now also able to call in the best fit clients to my program who then will come onto the sales call knowing that I am the coach for them. And guess what? I no longer get the objection or like hesitation of thanks for the call, but I have a few more discovery calls coming up. So I'll let you know. Thanks. I don't get that objection anymore. Okay. So now let's talk about some practical tips that you can apply in your own business and brand right now. And these are tips that were actually inspired by a book that I recently read. So this book was called Galileo and the Science Deniers by Mario Livio. 
<laughs> so in a nutshell, this was a biography book about the life of Galileo Galilei, who was born in 1564. Okay, so way back when. <laughs> and this was basically a book or biography written by one of his big fans, super fans, who just happens to be an astrophysicist. So that means that he really understood Galileo's scientific work deeply. And he was he was also a really, really good writer who was very compelling with his words. So I really just love reading the book. But, but anyways, so in the preface of the book, the author shared his thoughts on why the Hubble Space Telescope which is essentially the great, great, great grandson of Galileo's telescope, right? So he was explaining why this Hubble Space Telescope has been described as one of the most recognizable projects in scientific history, okay? So the six points that the author then described were number one, the Hubble produces spectacular images, Number two, the Hubble has contributed to a wide range of scientific discoveries. Number three, the drama associated with the telescope. Number four, the genuine and pure dedication of scientists who use the telescope. Number five, the telescope's longevity. So meaning it was launched in 1990 and it's still being used to this day, right? And number six, a lot of dissemination of knowledge and outreach programs to spread the research and the findings produced by the telescope. So the reason why I'm sharing this is because we can actually apply each of those six bullet points to you, your business, and your brand right now. So let's unpack that. Okay, so the first point was that the Hubble produces spectacular images. And how this translates for us is that we can produce a spectacular quality body of work right now. So the key thing to note here is the emphasis on quality rather than quantity. So the Hubble is known for producing spectacular quality of images, not necessarily the spectacular quantity of it. Now that said, I do personally believe that both quantity and quality can both help you practice um, contributing to your body of work and helping you become known for something, right? So if you've been prioritizing, for example, posting consistently for the past year, and you've been really diligently posting every single week on Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever your, your platform of choice is, I first want to just reassure you that no efforts was wasted, like no time was wasted in that. You have been contributing to your body of work and you have been practicing certain skills consistently. So that's really important. And none of that time or effort is wasted, right? Even if you currently don't feel like you have a like a quality body of work, right? Okay, but now let's say um, that you perhaps maybe you did focus on consistency or quantity, but now you're really questioning like, okay, I want to like amp up my quality of work. So here's what I want to say to this. So generally speaking, there's a lot of quote unquote best practices or like tips that generally make a lot of sense and they, they work and they're very helpful, right? So one tip that I can offer here and it's something that I've done myself is to create a habit tracker to track how often you've been practicing a particular best practice or a tip. Okay. So for example, right now, like literally right now, I'm actually tracking the following things on my Instagram stories. Number one, how often I share my story. Number two, the energy in which I make an offer from. Number three, how often I share my mission and vision. Number four, how often I share my unique process. And number five, how often am I backing up every abstract concept with either a metaphor or like a concrete example so I can really ground that concept for my audience, right? And notice how I didn't say like, oh, I'm tracking how often I'm, I, I post on Instagram stories, right? Or like how often I make an offer. Like that's not what I'm paying close attention to, but rather I'm paying attention to how I am doing a particular item or practicing a certain skill on Instagram stories, right? So when it comes to building a quality body of work, 
to help you become known for something, there honestly, there's no shortage of like best practices for your messaging, content, copywriting, and so on that you can implement in home, right? And although all of them are likely very helpful, I would suggest picking just a handful to practice at a given time. So that way you can learn to really milk the benefits of these tips and best practices so that you can turn up the overall impact and potency of your content without necessarily having to like turn up the quantity or frequency of how often you post, right? And when you're known for really good content that is helpful, thought-provoking, and really well articulated, people start to pay attention even more to what you have to say next. So that is the first tip for today. Okay. Now, the second bullet point was, remember, the Hubble has contributed to a wide range of scientific discoveries. So how this can translate for us is to remember that the contributions that we make can actually become the foundation to a lot more awesome contributions, either by yourself or by others. So here's what I mean by this. When you go first, this helps others take the next step also. Because when you're willing to share first, this helps others share also, right? So that's how it also works in research, right? Because we as scientists, we have to study the work of others before we can then formulate our own hypotheses or design an experiment to test the hypothesis, right? We have to rely on other people's research findings in order to guide our next steps, like literally, right? Like if you ever read an academic publication, there's always a literature review section where scientists have to explain how past research and past findings is informing their decisions for their own research. So how this applies to your business and brand is to recognize that becoming known for something, it doesn't just mean you, right? Like as in it's only you that's getting all the spotlight or you are the only person getting the recognition or are being benefited by, by your efforts. But instead, it's also remembering the purpose behind why you're even doing what you do and becoming known for something. Because my guess is that if you're a listener of this show, then being of service to this world matters just as much to you than getting recognition for the work that you do, right? So, so more specifically, what I mean by this is when you're building a body of work, remember to consider how to make your content, message, story, et cetera, even more relevant, helpful, as accessible, and so on to the people who actually want your work, right? Who you actually want your work to reach and impact, right? So, to the earlier point, right? There's a lot of content, messaging, copywriting, tips and best practices that you could use to make the work more digestible for your audience, right? And you can also consider like how to visually organize or lay out your information so that it's physically, visually easier to read, right? So that could look like bolding certain keywords, using bullet points to organize information, or like using emojis to like convey emotions, right? So these are some like practical tips you can consider. But also if we were to like take it one layer deeper, we can also think about how you can repurpose your content onto more platforms so that it is available to more people, right? So right, for example, for me personally, my two main platforms are Instagram and the podcast. And these are the two main platforms where I create fresh new content on a weekly basis. So for the podcast specifically, I make it available both in audio form, which is available on platforms like iTunes and Spotify, and also in video form, which is available on YouTube, right? And then I repurpose the video podcast so that I now have several shorter video clips that I then will post on LinkedIn, TikTok, and Instagram. So that means that I use LinkedIn, TikTok, and Instagram to promote my main platform, which is the podcast, right? So in a nutshell, do consider how to make your existing content more accessible by either number one, making the content easier to consume, digest, and process, or number two, making the content available on more platforms through content repurposing. All right, moving along to point number three, which was the drama associated with the telescope. So how this translates is to remember that ruffling some feathers, it is expected, so embrace it. Okay, so I think for a lot of us, we have probably heard the marketing advice to be quote-unquote polarizing, 
right? Because if you're not polarizing, then you're being too vanilla, supposedly. And when you're being too vanilla, you're not appealing to anyone. And you're essentially invisible because you're neither attracting or repelling people. So that's like the general sentiment of a lot of marketing advice. For me personally, I don't necessarily think we have to like go out of the way to be polarizing, but rather I am an advocate of simply being just honest and sharing what you genuinely believe in, right? And also expect that no matter what you have to say, there will always be someone who disagrees with your point of view or who judges what you have to say, right? So for example, my story of quitting law school is something that I've been asked to speak on and share more about, right? It's part of the few things that I'm uh, especially known for. It's also what my audience and clients respond positively to. And I've gotten like numerous positive messages from listeners of the podcast who tell me how much my story has helped them in some way. But at the same time, I've also seen how my story it doesn't land with some people, right? So about a year, a year and a half ago, my story was actually featured on a local newspaper called Today Online here in Singapore. And let's just say that there were some comments in the comment section of the article that were really unkind and very judgmental in nature, right? There were also a lot of assumptions made about me and that were very baseless. And overall, there were like some pretty unkind and hurtful things that people said. Right. But despite that, my story still has helped a lot of people. And it is literally what I'm being asked to speak on at speaking events or on podcast interviews. Right. So all this to say, while I'm not personally of the opinion of go purposely say polarizing things just for marketing's sake, but rather I would encourage us to share things that we really mean. Right. And we're sharing our own honest truth, right? And oftentimes I have found that when we're simply being genuine and sincere in our content, that's what resonates most with our audience. And it is how we start to become known for these honest and genuine sharings. Okay, now let's move to point number four, which is the genuine and pure dedication of scientists who use a telescope. And how this translates is that you can also embody the genuine and pure dedication to your own work. Okay, so when we think about our favorite thought leaders or entrepreneurs or content creators or like anyone who we really respect for the work that they do, it's often abundantly clear that they really care about their craft, right? Like they really care about what they do. They really care about doing the best that they can. And oftentimes, People are known for something because you can see how much time, care, and energy they put into what they do. Because if, let's say, we flip the script and think about someone who doesn't care about their work, I would venture to say that they're probably not known for that work, right? Or maybe they have even developed a reputation of being something who doesn't like their own work, right? So... I think that for a lot of us who are listening to this podcast, we have the inner desire to not only be known for something, but we also want to be known for how much care and time and energy we've put into this thing that we're known for, whether it's a body of work that we've built so that we become known for our ideas or story, or maybe it's the years and years of honing a particular skill so that you're now known for being one of the most skilled persons in your field, whatever it is. I have a strong feeling that you want to become known for how much genuine and pure dedication you have for your work, okay? So a specific tip I want to offer here is to continuously, every single day, ground back to why you do what you do, right? Because I know how easy and natural it is to feel frustrated and discouraged along the way. I get it, right? And that's why for me, I actually now have a weekly practice where I literally schedule time on a weekly basis to reconnect back to why I do what I do. So I would literally draw mind maps. And these mind maps are basically just a brain dump where I just think 
and dream about my business or work. There's no like structure. There's no like step-by-step things I have to check off when I do these mind maps. It's literally just a practice for me to ground back to the heart of why I do what I do. And guess what? Oftentimes my mind maps are literally like the same thing that I did the week before and the week before. Because it, again, the, the, the purpose is not to create like brand new innovative ideas. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes it happens, but more often than not, it's really just for me to ground back to what I already know and believe in, hence connecting me back to the heart of why I do what I do. All right, point number five, the telescope's longevity. So how this translates for us is you can choose to stay in the game for the long haul and continue growing your body of work in your selective field, craft, industry, et cetera. So the point here basically ties in very nicely with the earlier one, which is I do believe that the longer that you choose to continue what you do, then naturally the more your impact in that field or area is going to compound, right? Because the more you stay in the game, then the more perspectives that you develop, the more experience you acquire, which then helps you produce a body of work even more compellingly and also help you become even better at the particular skills or your craft. And naturally, when you're becoming more and more skilled at something, whether it's your body of work or being a communicator of your thoughts or being a really good coach who helps your clients get transformations, naturally, you become known for that. So in summary, keep going. And finally, point number six, there was a lot of dissemination of knowledge and outreach programs to spread the research and findings produced by the telescope. So how this translates to us is remember, you can dedicate efforts to the dissemination of knowledge and doing outreach to spread your work and ideas. Because even if you have really, really great ideas or a really powerful story that can change someone's life, if no one knows about it, it won't help anyone and you won't become known for anything. So this is where we need to consider all of the tools and networks that are available to us so that we can get our work out there. So whether it is sharing about your ideas during an in-person conversation or leveraging the LinkedIn algorithm or the YouTube algorithm to amplify your work out into the world, it is our responsibility to leverage what is available to us so that we can really add value to others and also over time become known for something. So those are the six tips I want to offer for today as you continue to build your body of work and work towards your goal of becoming known for something. So to quickly summarize them once again, number one, you can produce a spectacular quality body of work right now. Number two, your contributions can become the foundation to even more cool contributions, either by yourself or by others. Number three, ruffling some feathers, it is expected, so embrace it. Number four, you can truly embody genuine and pure dedication to your work. Number five, you can choose to stay in the game for the long haul and continue growing your body of work. And number six, you can dedicate efforts to the dissemination of knowledge and doing outreach to spread your work and ideas. Okay, so one more thing before we wrap up for today. So now that we talked about all of this, I just want to say, If you are also someone who has a dream of not only making a big income and impact in this world, but you also want to be known for your body of work, for your unique thought leadership, and for a message that you care deeply about, this is exactly the type of work that we dive deep into inside our program, the Side Hustle Club. So here's how we're going to make this happen, okay? So for most of the clients who join us inside the program, they've already usually worked with a handful of clients, but they're not signing clients consistently. So when you join our program, we're first going to do a deep dive into what you really want to become known for. And then we're going to creatively and methodically craft out a plan for you to build a body of work that really highlights your unique thought leadership. And at the same time, as you start to see that you're capturing the attention of your audience because every piece of content that you put out is now tying back to your growing expertise, that's when you really start to lay the foundation for the next stage of our work together, which is skill stacking three particular core skills, which is number one, becoming known for your unique thought leadership, 
Number two, soft launching and building a simple time efficient business. And number three, building a brand that is an honest and genuine reflection of you. The Side Hustle Club, honestly, it is the place to be for entrepreneurs and side hustlers who want to sign clients, build a business and career that they're proud of, and ultimately become known as a leader in their industry. So if you're ready, you can head on over to CherylTheory.com slash program and send in your application. And I cannot wait to see you soon. All right. Okay. So to the listeners of the show, once again, as usual, I appreciate you for being here. Thank you so much for tuning in in today's episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Sounds good? Awesome. Let's get to work.